What a fine establishment of mercantile exchange I see before me. You there, squire. Take these ducats and stable my steed, will you? There's a good lad. Oh, and do be careful. The old boy tends to get a bit nippy around people who breathe too frequently. Can I help you? Huzzah! To the contrary, my good masters of commerce, it is I who shall aid thee. Who standeth before you is none other than Sir Brick Stackington, a knight of noble birth, a surmounter of dangerous perils, and a purveyor of chivalric deeds, and a man in desperate need of the privy. Where might I find one? Ah. Now that that side quest is finished, let us on to the real journey. Now then, what quest have you for a man of my talents? Hmm? Don't be shy. Really? Nothing? Is there a dragon that might need slaying? Oh, perhaps a delicate princess trapped in a tower by an arcane practitioner of the dark arts. No? Well, you... You could inventory this set. The Black Knight's Castle! Very well then, I accept your quest, and I shall do so verily. To arms! Let there be glory in death and victory in battle! Huzzah! Think? Yeah. Yes. So, my brave knights and young squires, we speak of today the greatest theme the Lego group has ever produced. The castle theme, starting in 1987 with the infamous Yellow Castle. Why, this Yellow Castle, in fact. The wonderfully imaginative castle theme would spawn many different factions throughout the ages. The first to appear were the Black Falcons, followed closely in the year of our Lord 1988 AD by the Black Knights, with the inclusion of the Black Monarch's castle. Of course, the Black Knights wouldn't be officially branded as the Black Knights until 1992 with the official release of the Black Knight's castle, the very same and noble set we look at today. I'm going to remove my helm. I don't think I shall see battle while I review this set, but I shall keep it close by in case a rogue dragon decides to descend upon us. Fear not, I am protected. I should like to mention that this set is a specific request from a noble young knight I met on the eve of Black Friday. He told me he was a fan of our channel, and I asked him, young sir knight, is there a set you would like me to take a look at next? And he said, verily, my lord. I, I'm paraphrasing. He requested a castle set, and I said, I shall do this for thee. Still paraphrasing. So this video is in request by young Sir Ralph. I hope you enjoy it. So let's look at the Black Knight's castle, set number 6086 from 1992. The Black Knights were infamous for the black design added into their castle and the new rounded shields added to the theme. They were distinctive with their blue wyvern, that is a dragon without front legs. These are your Smaugs, your Game of Thrones dragons. This box seems to have seen better days. Ah, it is battle-worn. The side has been missing. This is an insert that comes completely out. And this is the window box style. Ah, look at that. We have a little puppet castle look to it. I see a base plate, raised base plate if you will. We have a new and exciting adventure awaits you with every Lego system. Don't they know it? The variety of sets available is sure to provide fun no matter what your interest. This something for everyone. It's like they're reading my mind. On the back, we have different configurations, I believe. Yes, as was the style of the tag. We have our instructions, I see. 
and a load of loose pieces. Let us be brave and delve headlong into the set and restore it to its former glory. Here's our base plate. I believe this particular one appeared in several sets. Oh, do I detect a stress line right there? I do believe we have several of these. We may have to replace this particular fellow. Aha! The instructions in very good condition. And we have a setting sun motif, perhaps? Because the Black Knights do live in the dark, don't they? <laughs> Those rapscallions. This set was also referred to as the Dungeon Master's Castle, but only in Canada. And I see why. There is a dungeon included. The lone wolf warrior is imprisoned by the evil Black Knights. Are they evil, really? Or are they just emo? Does their name come from the blackness in their hearts, or merely the color they decide to cast themselves upon? Let us see. I'm especially excited, as I am known to be excitable, because this castle set was the largest in the theme, and at the time, and for many years after, in fact, was considered to be the Best castle made, for various reasons. One is it inc- That was the ghost. For one reason, it introduced new dragon plumes and four mounted knights, each sporting a different color plume atop their noble helms. It also introduced new oval-shaped shields, which the Black Knights were famously carrying into battle. For the Black Knights were always identified across the battlefield, sporting their blue wyvern on their rounded shield. Quite showy of them. But is it just pomp and circumstance, or is their showy nature backed by battle-hewn instincts? We shall soon discover the truth of the matter. Oh, no! I see this horse has been trued upon. You see on his leg there, poor fellow. A victim of a hungry night on a long and lonesome journey. You'll see the teeth marks there. Someone was getting quite hungry, but couldn't finish their meal. Personally, I wouldn't start with the feet. The rump is where the good meat is. I can't blame him, though. I myself had to eat my steed at least twice on a cold winter's night. Ah, we have our yellow dragon plume. If I am correct, there was a red, yellow, white, and blue included in this set. We'll keep searching to see if they're all there. Ah, our white knight has a crack in his arm. That reminds me of another story. We were marching upon a dark and dirty moor. I had a young, inexperienced knight with our company at that time, who found his own wound upon his hand. The wound became angry and gangrenous. Being a well-weathered veteran of battle, I knew at once what must be done. With the very same sword I used to cleave my enemies in twain, I separated the man's arm from his body. And on the third try, nonetheless. That story aside, we will have to replace this arm. Not an easy task, but something I am versed in doing. Here we have our white-plumed knight. Minus his white plume, here we have his cracked arm. And because of that, his hand comes out quite easily. That will not do for a set of this grandeur. So we shall perform surgery on the battlefield. Let us find another knight with a black left arm of suitable stature and strength and replace it. Ugh, this tunic keeps getting caught on things. It's not very conducive. Snagging on small little parts here and there. Adjusted. It... Yes, sir. Nice skirt. It's not a skirt. It's, it's a tunic. It's very different. Okay. I don't think the man I'll believes me. Word He'll have to take my word for it. Well, he should. I am a man of my word, after all. A knight of chivalry. Ha <laughs> ha! All right. Here we go. Uh, oh, that was easy enough. Black is a common colour for our little knights. This guy shall do quite nicely. I hope he doesn't mind a little surgery. Ah, here we are. To remove this arm, you want to grab it low. Here. Don't grab it 
here, because you could cause another stress fracture right there. You want to grab it as low as you can, and you peel this way. Hinge it off that way. So, like so. Pops right out. We shall do the same. There did he go. Here, notice I'm grabbing as low as I can. You can't see through my battle scar bandage. Pops right out. And it doesn't matter that this figure might be from the 90s or 2000s. And this figure is from 1992. They all work together. Thus is the magic and glory. Again, go in at an angle. Pop right back in. And the white plumed knight is ready for battle. There you are, your happy benign smile. I love it. Let's find your plume, good sir. You see behind me our noble selection of base plates. We have several of several qualities and shapes, sizes and colors, and, I assume, but will not verify, tastes. Ah, there we are. Way in the back. I shall open it up from the back and procure the perfect base plate. I see we are missing several pieces. What rapscallion has absconded with these fine chattels? We don't have a brown horse. We're missing some minifigures, and I don't see the white dragon plume. I consulted a soothsayer, and she told me quite mysteriously that the white dragon plume only came in this set. And unfortunately, it is not here. So, we will have to visit our graveyard, see what we have in our cabinets, and ask around to find the elusive white dragon plume. This might also be a good time to mention the difference between old brown and new reddish brown. Many of you already know of the difference between light bluish gray and the old gray. Play. In other words, when we replace the parts and find our horse and the other brown parts, we must make certain it is the old brown. Let us take a moment to compare. New reddish brown post 2005 and the original brown. But you'll see when we put them together, there's quite a difference. This is more of a pure brown and this definitely is reddish brown. So I would say the name of this color is quite accurate. This set included some halberds in the original brown, so we will do our best to find them. I bring good tidings. I was able to find all of the pieces missing, and there were a few. Nothing was too difficult for this brave knight. I crossed many barren wastelands, trudged through marshes most foul, and even found the original brown pieces. However, the white plume I spoke of earlier, it does not exist. Not anywhere. It does not exist in our set graveyards, in our minifigure graveyards, or anywhere else that I can find. So the soothsayer recommended we reach from afar and order the piece to come hither to us. But that is not interesting fare, is it? That does not make for good adventure, my lords and ladies. So I instead shall go to the dragon known to house such treasures in its hoard. Let us be off to battle! Then. How about you then? Actually, so like, dude, I have a really hot date in a few minutes. I don't have time for all this. Just like, take what you want and get out of here, okay? Oh, well, that's very civil of you. Thank you. Dude, she's gonna be here any minute, all right? Right, I'll, I'll just be off then. Scram. Now, okay. And here we have the extreme majesty that is. Black Knight's Castle. So majestic, so noble, so medieval. We will take a look at the minifigures, post haste. But first, let us take in the grand majesty that is the castle. Let's look at the front from all angles. Until I built this set, I did not realize that these inverted slopes here were at the same degree 
as the base plate themselves. Very handy to know. We have our tower there, and we have a smaller tower in the back. And our guards and archers posted everywhere. This drawbridge, you'll find that I did change how I built this. I found these are actually supposed to be facing forward, like so. But I found that the string got caught between here. There wasn't quite enough space, so I moved them outward. This is how it's supposed to be in the instructions. This is what I did. I found that the string moved a little more freely. That is the glory of Lego. Do with it what you will. Here's our crank to raise the drawbridge. And reverse. Now, like all these old castle sets, it's a little stuck on the way back. Need to give it a little, little tug love. There we go. The, now uh, what is that called? The gate thingy. The portcullis. Portcullis, that's what it is. This can be raised as well. With a string like this. And you can wrap it around that piece. They suggest you wrap it around or plug it up here. However you'd like to raise the portcullis. A knight would venture up this way, up into the castle, and there is our dungeon. Notice we have another pair of red dragon plumes up there with the black knight's shield, and flanking on either side of the gate. You will notice, I'm sure, that I do not show the castle's left side nor the inner workings of the dungeon. This is in no way due to a misplaced thumb unexpectedly halting the recording and then the missing footage going unnoticed by me until after the castle had already been dismantled. No, instead I will tell you that a gaggle of ne'er-do-well goblins spirited away the footage and despite my valiant efforts it could not be retrieved. I do apologize. This was before the time of the metallic gold, so we just have yellow. Couple coins and a goblet in yellow. And this, they did not skimp on the details. A retreating back passage. Or, if someone was storming the castle, perhaps they discovered this passage, and that was their gateway into the castle. Our final side has a bit of detailing with some aqueducts for water or sewage, whatever your fancy. Another pike there, place for the archers, and that is that for that side, the back of the front gate has room for minifigures to stand. That's where our what colors gate is for this string here? Works perfectly. We have a ladder to go up to this level. We have a spare sword in the old grey right there. A torch. You'll find other torches. And here we have a locked tower. And that is where our ghost resides. Probably a scorned uncle from a past king. That is the old style ghost, glow in the dark, the happy ghost. We'll take a closer look at him. But he lives there to haunt unsuspecting princes or guardsmen. Small standing area there. More weapons to be pelted down upon invading forces. Quite lovely. Let us meet our knights. Of course, these are all part of the Black Knight faction. Look how good they look all in a row. Looks so nice. But even though they are all part of the Black Knight's faction, we shall refer to them by plume color. Yellow Knight, 
Blue Knight, White Knight, we'll get to him in a moment, and our Red Knight. So you'll see this man is decked out in the horse barting with his wyvern on his black horse, sword at the ready, shield sporting a quite fetching moustache, if I might add. These are individual to the other side. I might have these reversed, actually. Oh my goodness, let's fix that. There we are. You saw nothing. This is how it was the entire time. Although each of these dragon plumes came as a complete sprue, with a left, a right, and a top, this is the configuration the instructions gave you. Of course, you do not have to abide by it, but the yellow gets all three. Blue only gets the one, red only gets the one, and the white is supposed to get all three as well. Moving on to the blue knight. No barting on this young chap, and he hasn't afforded his armor piece either. But he's ready for battle. He can at least afford to feed a horse. Quite standard. We'll put him marching with the yellow knight there. Moving on to the red knight. Also no barding on this horse, and no room to put the side wings, as they call it, plumes. He is also lacking in his chest armor, but there is a printed chest armor there, you'll see. And he is also ready for battle. Finally we go to the elusive white knight, with his very expensive and exclusive white plumes, which I have not put on because when we ordered it, or should I say, when I procured it from the dragon, it came on the sprue. So I dare not take this off because this is in original condition, or very nearly. I will let the person who buys this have the pleasure to de-sprue. So our white knight would have all three. As it is shown in the instructions, his barding is the same print as the Yellow Knights, just done in blue and black. Very nicely done. Quite intimidating when you see this crew of miscreants marching toward you. Next we shall meet our motley crew of castle defenders. We have our crossbowmen and his identical twin brother, the Pikeman. In fact, that's what they shall be called. Johnny Crossbowman and Johnny Pikesman. Yes, they're twins by first name, not last name. We have a couple of archers. They all have the same chainmail pattern on all of them. Mixing up the heads and leg patterns and colors, I should say. Of course, Johnny Pikesman has the cape, the old-style plastic small cape. He's the only one who needs it. He tends to get cold. People call him a grandma sometimes, but he doesn't mind. It's the band of brotherhood he appreciates so much. And lastly, it brings us to our final brigade. Another pair of twins. I wonder how rare that was. And lastly, we have Another pair of twin archers. I wonder how rare that was back then. Two pairs of twins at the same castle. They are identical in every way. Even their happy little smiles. We have our wolf renegade prisoner. He's also very congenial, given his predicament. And our ghost. The old style happy ghost. He has a cape too. A red cape. There you go, wolf renegade prisoner. You go. Sport that cape. And that is the castle. Very, very nice. Very impressive. And that, my noble lords and ladies, is the Black Knight's Castle. Truly a remarkable set, one that stands alone on the precipice of great Lego castle sets, and I love it.
Don't forget, my noble lords and ladies, to comment, share, like, and subscribe to our YouTube channel for all your lego -y needs. We shall bring you more castles, more spaceships, more, who knows, dinosaurs? Bionicle? Dusting? What hath you to say to this, I say to you, to say to me, tis this that we say together? Hmm? So I bid you fare thee well, let the menstrual soul of your heart carry you into the next year. Thank goodness, right? Hark, what do I see? A young damsel in distress. Well, that just seems to be my sort of thing. Have at you, knaves! All right, you roguish cur! Release the young maiden, you cuckold! You, you carpetbagger! You uh, sackbutt of disreputable parentage! I shall make you rule the day, you absconded with that young woman! Why, she's not even your type! Oh, you are right, fair maiden. I hope that foul man didn't hurt you. I'll take that as a yes. Get it from like here, kind of close here to here. Don't don't I'll start draw yet. The sword yeah. and just like come at you, and then I'll walk off frame, and you keep where you are. Ready? All right, you roguish pair, release the young maiden, you cuckold. 